Hi guys, Miss Price here. Um, I'm going to read the reading section um, for you today. What causes climate? Okay, so we're looking into what climate is, what causes it, and then we're eventually going to move into the different climate regions on the planet. So for today's reading, what causes climate? Here we are. If you telephone a friend in another state and ask, What's the weather there today? She might answer, it's gray, cool, and rainy. It's usually like that this time of year. Your friend has told you something about both weather and climate. Weather is day-to-day -day events. The weather may be cloudy and rainy one day and clear and sunny the next. Weather refers to the condition of the atmosphere at a particular place and time. Climate, on the other hand, refers to the average year-after-year -year conditions of temperature, precipitation, winds, and clouds in an area. How would you describe the climate where you live? Two main factors, temperature and precipitation, determine the climate of region. A climate region is a large area with similar climate conditions throughout. For example, the climate in the southeastern United States is humid with moderate temperatures. This picture shows some polar bears. These polar bears, two males and their mother, are taking it easy in the polar zone. So here we have a diagram that shows the polar zone, temperate zone, tropical zone, temperate zone, and polar zone. You notice how they're kind of stacked on the planet in layers and they change as you go up or as you go down. Factors affecting temperature. Tropical countries such as Panama are usually hot. Northern countries such as Finland are usually cold. Why are some places warm and others cold? The main factors that influence temperature are latitude, altitude, distance from large bodies of water, and ocean currents. Latitude. In general, climates of locations further from the equator are cooler than climates of areas closer to the equator. Why is this? As you found out, if you tried to the discover activity, the sun's rays hit Earth's surface most directly at the equator. At the poles, the same amount of solar radiation is spread out over a larger area and therefore brings less warmth. Recall that latitude is the distance from the equator measured in degrees. Based on latitude, Earth's surface can be divided into three temperature zone zones shown in figure one. The tropical zone is the area near the equator between about 23 and a half degrees north latitude and 23 and a half degrees south latitude. The tropical zone receives direct or nearly direct sunlight all year round, making climates there warm. We're going to pause right here and look back at this diagram. That would be this area right here in the center of the planet. That would be that tropical zone. In contrast, the sun's rays always strike at a lower angle near the north and south poles. As a result, the areas near both poles have cold climates. These polar zones extend from about 66 and a half degrees to 90 degrees north and 66 and a half degrees to 90 degrees south. The temperate zones are between the tropical and the polar zones from about 23 and a half degrees to 66 and a half degrees north and 23 and a half degrees to 66 and a half degrees south latitudes. In summer, the sun's rays strike the temperate zones more directly. In winter, the sun's rays strike at a lower angle. As a result, the weather in the temperate zones ranges from warm or hot in summer to cool or cold in winter. Again, here's this diagram. We see the polar zones here at the top, the polar zone here at the bottom, temperate zones in between polar 
and tropical temperate zone between polar and tropical. And for your knowledge, we live here in Tennessee in a temperate zone. Altitude. The peak of Mount Kilimanjaro towers high above the African plains. At nearly six kilometers above sea level, Kilimanjaro is covered in snow all year round. Yet, it is located near the equator at three degrees south latitude. Why is Mount Kilimanjaro so cold? In the case of high mountains, altitude is a more important climate factor than latitude. Recall from chapter 11 that the temperature of the troposphere decreases about six and a half degrees Celsius degrees for every one kilometer increase in altitude. So as you go higher in altitude, the temperature drops, okay? As a result, highland areas everywhere have cool climates, no matter what their latitude. At nearly six kilometers, the air at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro is about 39 degrees Celsius degrees colder than the air at sea level at the same latitude. Distance from large bodies of water. Oceans or large lakes can also affect temperatures. Oceans greatly moderate or make less extreme the temperatures of nearby land. Water heats up more slowly than land. It also cools down more slowly. Therefore, winds from the ocean keep coastal regions from reaching extremes of hot and cold. Much of the west coasts of North America, South America, and Europe have mild marine climates with relatively warm winters and cool summers. The centers of North America and Asia are too far inland to be warmed or cooled by the oceans. Most of Canada and Russia, as well as the central United States, have continental climates. Continental climates have more extreme temperatures than marine climates. Winters are cold, while summers are warm or hot. Ocean currents. Many marine climates are influenced by ocean currents, streams of water within the ocean that move in regular patterns. In general, warm ocean currents carry warm water from the tropics toward the poles. Cold currents bring cold water from the polar zones towards the equator. The surface of the water warms or cools the air above it. The warmed or cooled air then moves over the nearby land. So a warm current brings warm air to the land it touches. A cold current brings cool air. As you read about the following currents, trace their paths on the map in figure three. The best known warm water current is the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream begins in the Gulf of Mexico, then flows north along the east coast of the United States. When it crosses the North Atlantic, it becomes the North Atlantic Drift. This warm current gives Ireland and Southern England a mild wet climate, despite their relatively high latitude. In contrast, the cool California current flows from Alaska southward down the west coast. The California current makes climates of places along the west coast cooler than you would expect at their latitudes. Here's the Gulf Stream, the North Atlantic Drift, and here's that California current. Factors affecting precipitation. The amount of rain and snow that falls in an area each year determines how wet or dry its climate is. But what determines how much precipitation an area gets? The main factors that affect precipitation are prevailing winds and the presence of mountains. Prevailing winds. 
As you know, weather patterns depend on the movement of huge air masses. Air masses are moved from place to place by prevailing winds, the directional winds that usually blow in a region. Air masses can be warm or cool, dry or humid. The amount of water vapor in the air mass influences how much rain or snow will fall. Warm air can carry more water vapor than cold air. When warm air rises and cools, water comes out of the air as precipitation. For example, surface air near the equator is generally hot and humid. As the air rises and cools, heavy rains fall, nourishing thick tropical forests. In contrast, sinking cold air is usually dry. Because the air becomes warmer as it sinks, it can hold more water vapor. The water vapor stays in the air and little or no rain falls. The result may be a desert. The amount of water vapor in prevailing winds also depends on where the winds come from. Winds that blow inland from oceans carry more water vapor than winds that blow from over land. For example, the Sahara in Africa is near both the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, yet the Sahara is very dry. This is because few winds blow from the oceans towards this area. Instead, the prevailing winds are the dry northeast trade winds. The source of these winds is cool sinking air from Southeast Asia. Mountain ranges. A mountain range in the path of prevailing winds can also influence where precipitation falls. As you have learned, when humid winds blow from the ocean toward coastal mountains, they are forced to rise up to pass over the mountains. The rising warm air cools and its water vapor condenses, forming clouds. Rain or snow falls on the windward side of the mountains, the side the oncoming wind hits. By the time the air reaches the other side of the mountains, it has lost much of its water vapor, so it is cool and dry. The land on the leeward side of the mountains, downward, is in a rain shadow. The Owens Valley in California, shown in figure five, is in the rain shadow of the Sierra Nevada, about 80 kilometers west of Death Valley. Humid winds blow eastward from the Pacific Ocean. In the photo, you can see that this humid air has left snow on top of the mountains. Then the air flowed down the leeward side of the mountains. As it moved downward, the air became warmer. The desert in the Owens Valley on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada was formed by this hot, dry air. Microclimates. Have you ever noticed that it is cooler and more humid in a grove of trees than in an open field? The same factors that affect large climate regions also affect smaller areas. A small area with specific climate conditions may have its own microclimate. Inland mountains, lakes, forests, and other natural features can influence climate nearby resulting in a microclimate. You may find a microclimate in a downtown area with clusters of tall buildings or on a windy peninsula jutting out into the ocean. Even a small park, if it is usually sunnier or windier than nearby areas, may have its own microclimate. The grass on a lawn can be covered in dew and produce conditions and produce conditions like a rainforest, while the pavement in the parking lot is dry like a desert. That concludes our section one on climates. Stay tuned for Miss Menendez's reading of climate regions, section two. 
All right. Thanks, guys, for listening. We'll see you back later. Bye.